I actually don't know how I'm gonna maintain professionalism throughout this video. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel and today you can tell by the title this is my reaction and review to the Heartstopper TV, Netflix, whatever, series. <laughs> Why am I crying? Why am I crying? Now a lot of you know I did reactions to the trailers but I could not react to the show and film it. I just couldn't. I know some of you wanted it and like listen it would have got loads of views, it would have been great, like great for the channel but like I I couldn't do it. For context I started reading the graphic novel series I think in 2020, start of 2020 and I just loved it so much, so much and it's been such an important you know series for me throughout the years and I just knew I wouldn't enjoy the show as much if I filmed myself watching it because I'd be thinking about you know how I should react and what I should say and I just wanted to relax and enjoy it so that's what I did I watched it without filming myself and I'm gonna kind of chat to you about it now. Now, also, we need to <laughs> understand, I'm simply not gonna be capable of like coherent thought or like order in this. I've watched a few like reviews of the show and they like have their points planned out. Listen, they got a good structure to the video that makes it easy for you to follow. You are no way getting that from me. No, <laughs> it's not happening because I can't, I, I am incapable of thinking logically or seriously about this adaptation. I just can't do it. So we're gonna go from point A to point P to point Z to point B to point Q. Like we're gonna be going all over the place. There's gonna be no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just gonna chat to you about my thoughts about it. And it's like no organization. And I'm probably gonna be talking about like the least like relevant stuff we would talk about, but it's like what I'm feeling. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? <laughs> I'm also gonna try not to be spoilery for either the book or the show, but it's quite hard. So if there's anything I think is spoilers, I will put spoilers up on the screen. But I feel like, you know, you know the premise of this show and the graphic novels are gonna be Nick and Charlie, these characters, these boys meeting and falling for each other essentially like you know that that is you don't you know, the romance them them falling for each other is not a spoiler well i mean that's too far <laughs> so yeah if you don't know this is a series about these two boys who fall for each other and the show is very much also about their friendship group and also just kind of the trials that them starting their relationship has okay where do we start oh i know where i want to start it's not where you're expecting me to start nelly <laughs> here i am fabulous and ready to slay. Nanny and Isaac, I'm just gonna say are my favorite characters. <laughs> <laughs> like the two background characters, we'll talk about Isaac later, but let's start with Nelly. Queen, queen behavior. Me and my mom had a running joke that A, she was the most expensive <laughs> member of the cast. <laughs> she had very strict rules in her contract. She had to be freshly shampooed, they had to get her good side. They were like, <laughs> there was one point where they show like a picture of, that they took of Nick, Charlie and Nelly. And Nick and Charlie look fine, but Nelly looks fucking beat for the gods. Like I think they've made, she made them Photoshop her. <laughs> She was like in scene, she didn't need to be, and she'd just be there like, and what? And what? An icon. Me and my mom just had this running joke every time she appeared. Like we would, we would just burst out laughing at Nelly. Like, like <laughs> Nelly is Nick's dog, by the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna act as if you've seen the show, but also not spoil it in case you haven't. I also joked that like there's a scene where a character called Imogen goes up and strokes her, and I was like, right after they filmed that shot, people had to rush in and like disinfect her because Nelly, Nelly can't have anyone touching her. I like have a theory that in <laughs> this is so delusional. Why have I started with this? In in like a year, like a documentary is gonna come about how terrified they all were of her and how she was like a nightmare to work with. <laughs> anyway, I loved Nelly. Nelly was an icon. Nelly was like, they just always get her good side. She always looked beat for the gods. She was looking incredible. Freshly shampooed. She was it. Okay, now we're talking about Nelly. How did I feel about this adaptation having loved the books so much? I feel protective over the books. Like there's been a few people, like I, I got a bit jealous. I've been a bit jealous of like people who haven't read the books, like watching it, <laughs> which of course is not what we want. We want everyone to watch this and appreciate it. But I've been like, um, this is mine. <laughs> I will say I just think the actors were incredible. Considering how young this cast is, I thought they did such a brilliant job. I think you can tell how involved Alice Oseman was with the whole situation, with the whole adaptation, because it felt like a very pure 
adaptation of the graphic novels and I think that what was added in enhanced the story. The first graphic novel is like the first three episodes and I think that was pretty much what we saw with a few added details but episodes four to eight so the last five episodes there was a lot added in and I feel like it really did enhance the story and the relationship and all the different relationships that grew throughout the book. I do think I preferred the graphic novels but I think it would have been like almost impossible for them to make something that I preferred over the graphic novels. I think this is by far the best adaptation of a series that I've loved that I've ever seen. Like for example I still have no- I I might one day, but I've still never finished the Shadow and Bone adaptation on Netflix because I found it really cringe. What? I liked the, the crows parts, but I found the Shadow and Bone parts cringe. I found them really cringy. <laughs> so I've never finished it, but this I just absolutely loved. Me and my mum, we watched it together. We would just be laughing out loud at so many moments. We were just like, we couldn't contain ourselves. Isaac and Nelly were both of our favourite characters. <laughs> Let's not talk about Isaac too much, but like, because <laughs> he's a very minor character, but every time he just appeared on screen, I smiled and I just thought he was the sweetest and I thought he was such a great addition. Imogen was the other added in character from the graphic, like who wasn't in the graphic novels. And I, I think it worked, her storyline in the, in the in the series, but I didn't think it was like necessary. But even though Isaac was just in the background, I was like, I can't imagine life without Isaac. <laughs> I love him! Like, the way he said pretty much every single one of his lines with a smile. Oh, I just, I love him so much. I just love him so much. Now, I cried twice while watching it. The, the second time was the thing right at the end that I'm pretty sure a lot of people cried at. It just felt very beautiful and I think, uh, you know, without spoiling anything, Nick did such a good job. Wait, firstly, Kit did such a good job acting in that scene, but like Nick did such a good job of expressing himself. But I cried, I think this is a spoiler. I don't know what is a spoiler in this. I don't think it's a spoiler. I don't think it spoils anything, but like if you care, leave. <laughs> I've seen other people mention this, not as spoilers. When um, Tari, Ta Tari? <laughs> That's their ship name. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. Tara and Darcy kissed at the party. And I didn't cry. Some people have said they cried like at the way Nick looked at them but I cried before he even you even saw him like just the joy and the relief and the like nervousness and then being so excited to kiss each other in public was just so emotional and gorgeous and I just think this whole show did such a good job of like honoring what it feels like to be a teenager falling in love I've only ever been in one relationship and I you know fell in love with him when I was 16 it did such a great job of of that nervousness and that like falling in love with each other and like in a school setting I thought it did a perfect job but also just the the amazing portrayal of queer love in this in this show I think is so needed I think just a, a purely okay I say purely joyful I mean there is difficult topics covered in this like particularly this one like homophobia and bullying um but I think as a whole there's such a joyful message throughout the show. Did I, did I tell you I'm going from point A to point B to point Z to point Q? Like I told you I'd be all over the place. I don't think, like there's no rhyme or reason to this. My favorite portrayal in the whole show was Kit's portrayal of Nick Nelson. Nick, uh, <laughs> Kit acted his little booty up. He said, yeah, I'm an actor. I'm an actor, look at these fucking eyes. <laughs> at the start, I think in the first episode they say Nick's like a Labrador. Oh, Kit said, Puppy dog eyes? You want puppy dog eyes? Sure. Sure, I can give you that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anytime, like, you saw his eyes, I was just like... <laughs> so I'm addicted to this. Um, not in a literal medical sense, but I don't think I could live without it. I thought he did such, 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 such a great job of playing Nick Nelson. Like, beyond anything I could have hoped. That was a real highlight for me in the show, was just how brilliant he was in it. I think, give him all the awards, I think he's absolutely amazing. I did like Charlie's portrayal as well, but just not as much as Nick's. Like, I just love Nick so much. But, Char like, the way Joe would do, Joe Locke, who portrayed Charlie, would do these, like, the little waves, Charlie's little waves. <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts. He just like, <laughs> oh my God, it killed me. And I think he did a great job of showing 
um, kind of Charlie's like awkwardness and overthinking and I think he did a great job of portraying that. Uh, a character that I would say I appreciated even more in, in the show than I did in the graphic novels is Tao. The whole friendship group, like Elle, I, I absolutely loved as well and how we saw so much more of her story and like saw a lot of Tara and Darcy through her eyes and Higgs through her eyes, I absolutely loved. But Tao, you know, I liked in the book, Tao's a great character in the books, but I thought the portrayal of him in this was just absolutely incredible. And how he brought both like comedic relief to certain elements, like I think the character I laughed out loud most at, other than Isaac and Nelly, <laughs> especially Nelly, um, was Tao. I like loved his one-liners, especially when like standing up to the bullies. I just thought he was great and the actor's delivery was great. And yeah, I think I grew to love Tao even more in this adaptation. I will say perhaps like what, not negative, but like <laughs> I did feel a bit, I'm not sure they got the kissing scenes like a hundred percent. Mm. <laughs> I felt a bit awkward watching teenagers kiss. Listen, I'm not old. I'm like 22. Is that old? It's kind of old. Like I'm kind of old now, but I still feel like I'm 16. I feel like having been in the relationship since I was 16, 17, I'm like, I haven't aged. Like, <laughs> but like there were, the kissing sometimes was a little bit awkward. I'm gonna say it. Oh, I'm gonna say it. Like not awkward, but like I just felt a bit uncomfortable and I'm not sure, but it's hard because they're kids, right? Like when you watch kissing scenes on TV, usually they're like adults, you know? It's like passionate and steamy, but they're kids, right? Even if the actors aren't like, uh, well, I think so, a lot of them are 18, but the characters are like 14, 15, 16. And so it's hard, I think, to portray that whilst also capturing the kind of like that kind of passion you do have when you're younger because like listen we all like it happens to all of us well some of us um some of us go through that and like having relationships when we're like you know 16 15 17 whatever but I think it's hard to show that duality of them being young whilst still like liking each other do you know what I mean I think it's hard to show but there was a few times the kissing I was like I don't feel like I should be, I don't, know, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if I'm the target market of this. And yeah, on the whole, I just thought it was a great expansion of the characters, like Tara and Darcy. <laughs> I love good news, love good news. I just love good news. <laughs> Sometimes I think in adaptations, I've seen a few people talk about us on Twitter as well. Like lesbians are referred to as gay, right? And like, that's fine. But like the use of the word lesbian is so important and it was like so prevalent and like also discussed like uncomfortable like being uncomfortable with calling yourself a lesbian and like tara trying to figure that out i just thought it was so good i'm just so excited for next season because i know what's coming i feel like they can play a bigger role even more so but i thought their stories were expanded on so well oh hang on i just had a thought i loved I loved, uh, you can just see Alice Oseman was like sprinkling all of Alice Oseman's influence over this. Said, let me give you some Alice Oseman. Let me give you some Alice Oseman-ness because the, <laughs> the use of like graphic novel panels and like the little doodles, <laughs> the little doodles that happened like in the really important emotional like moments where characters were really feeling something. I love the theatricality of that. That's giving me what I want. I always say, I love things, even in books, I love a little bit of theatricality, a little bit of something more, a little bit of something. Let me give you a moment. Let me give you a moment. And that is giving me a moment. I loved it. I loved that element of it. That's exactly what I want. And on the whole, I feel like I've talked a lot about my <laughs> my thoughts. I feel like I've really, I've really got myself out of that. I told you no organization to this because it was just simply not possible. I just needed to gush. You know, I'm just so glad that this show exists. I feel like a lot of people have been saying that, but I think it's so amazing that this show exists for like, like I said, I don't know if I'm quite the target audience. Well, I am in some ways, but like younger teens who are like 13, 14, 15, who are questioning their sexuality or are out as gay or lesbian or whatever, can see this, can see trans rep in this, can see so many different types of queer representation in this and feel so seen and it will help them figure them out, themselves out. And I just think it's absolutely amazing and I'm just so glad this has been adapted even though I feel a bit protective over it and I'm like this was just made for me you guys it's like a multi-million <laughs> pound show it was, it was just for me you know I think back to when I was like 14 and I think like the only main I mean of course like you know throughout the years <laughs> like 2014 was not when suddenly gay representation started be occurring like I think back to when like my parents were young and they watched the first like I think lesbian kiss on Buffy the Vampire Slayer which was like their favorite show do you know what I mean so like representation has existed but I'd say the only like really really visible representation I was like a young teenager of queerness was like Glee 
And Glee has its issues. Do you know what I mean? Glee, like, listen, that was that was a moment in time. Glee was a moment in time. So I think for this to now exist, um, you know, I, I can't really think of many, like, adaptations of bisexuality and, like, characters figuring that out. And I think that would have been so amazing for me to see when I was younger. I just absolutely loved it. I just thought, I'm so glad it exists. I'm going to watch it, like, ten times over. I finished it last night with my mum. And I feel like I'm going to watch it, like, a billion more times. Because I just loved it so much. And I think they did such a great job. You know, I've always said that the graphic novels feel like a warm hug you know, and I really feel like this show does as well. I feel like it really does just feel warm and comforting. To be honest, the adaptation, even with the awkward kissing, <laughs> is more than I think I could ever have hoped for. I think it was a real testament to Alice Oseman being so involved in the show that it feels so perfect. You know, it just felt perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it too. If you watched it, if you've watched it already, let me know what you thought of it down below. If you haven't, go fucking watch it. Why have you watched this whole video? <laughs> go watch if you haven't, but I'm guessing 99% of people watching this video will have watched it and loved it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know all of your thoughts. I want all the information also gush to each other about this show down below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, sorry it wasn't particularly organized and was just me giving my thoughts, but I feel like that was you know, gonna be real, most realistic and uh, respecting the adaptation and how much I loved it. So I love you, I have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!